Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers should exercise caution when watching this program as it may contain images of deceased persons. But first, an update on the iconic Kerala paintings. Since they came home from America two years ago, they've had a big impact, not just on the Aboriginal community, but on all West Australians. Monique Pashia brings us the next chapter. The return of the Kerala paintings has brought back a piece of history that was once thought to be lost, as Art Flowers was a part of their journey home and reveals the ripple effect the paintings are having on the world. When you throw a rock into, into a dam or into a swimming pool or whatever, when it sinks, it creates those ripples. And that's what these artworks have done. It's, it's created the, those ripples right throughout Noongar, Noongar country, the broader community on a um, national and international level. It was in the 1940s that the Aboriginal children of the Karalup Mission created the paintings that would capture the heart of the Noongar nation. The Karala paintings were missing for almost 50 years until they were rediscovered at Colgate University in New York. They are now back in Western Australia and their significance is stronger than ever. When I was out here myself as a mission kid back in 1968 to 1972, I was in that dormitory up there and I had no idea that this little place behind us was the Carolop School of Art, where all those artworks were done. Annette Davis from Vancouver Arts Centre recently showcased an exhibition inspired by the ripples in the pond, a term that Ezard created. You just used this expression, ripples in the pond, describing how the Carolop artworks and the fact that they're coming back to country was creating ripples in the pond, you know, you didn't know where it would finish. So I asked uh, Ezard if we could use that expression and he generously agreed. So that's what it means to us, that basically the Carol Up um, style continues to have ripples. The ripple effect of the paintings have seen them travel around the region. Chris Malcolm, director of the John Curtin Gallery, home of the paintings, has enabled the artwork to reach the wider community. We took the paintings to Albany. Um, we took them in Albany in May, and Albany is a large centre um, with a very large Noongar community. And Taking the works into Noongar country was part of the agreement that we had with Colgate University. It was, we felt it was very important for the works to go back to be very accessible to Noongar people. I think that's just so important. I think it's um, able to um, just remind uh, not Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal communities about the power of those works, but also it's about building pride and building connections, and I think it's um, really important. The Karalup style of artwork paints a different picture to what was once considered traditional Noongar art. The paintings are still having a big impact in regards to Noongar art specifically, um, because when we look at the old art scene, it's mainly about Aboriginal arts, and um, different kinds of medium, you know, like the dot and the skeletal mediums from um, Western Desert style and um, up in the Kimberleys. Well, these these artworks they they based on on landscape and and connection connection to country. The future of the paintings may also play a role in bridging the gap between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. Well, the long-term dreams which are becoming plans, um, uh, to have a facility here on campus at, at Bentley, which is an education and study research centre for the collection, which is built around the collection, um, which will then make the artworks even more accessible to the public, um, not only to the general public, but also to researchers who may want to come and interrogate and investigate the works because I'm sure there are many people out there who have no idea of the treasures that they possess. Joining us now in the Noongar Danju studio is Professor Marion Kickett, the Director of the Centre of Aboriginal Studies here at Curtin, and Tony Hanson, a well-respected leader and member of the Noongar community. Thank you both for joining me. 
Marion, let's start with you. What's your connection to Carol Up and the artworks? Well, my connection is uh, through my mother and her name was Pearl Brown. And at the age of 16, she decided that she didn't want to go to school anymore. So she stopped. And her punishment was uh, she was sent down to Carol Up. She taught many of the artists, um, such as Revel Cooper, um, Parnell Dempster, Reynold Hart, and um, also Barry Lou. And I know that because when I met these men when I was a young child, they, they would tell me that their mother was their teacher. Oh. So that's my connection. And Tony, what about you? And my connection is my grandparents, great-grandparents actually spent a bit of time at Carroll Up Mission. And um, later on in the early 1900s, they actually um, passed away and were buried on the property. And um, also connections with some of the artists throughout the district there at the time. Marion, what role can the paintings play in reconciliation, do you believe? I think they can play um, a very important part in reconciliation. Even if you go back and, and look at teacher that encouraged uh, the, the children to, to paint. Um, and so, so I think that connection between him and the children mm. and that shows you know, that, that relationship back then and he really acknowledged their talent and worked on their talent. Tony, after all these years, why do you think the paintings are still having a big impact? I think it's because a lot of these paintings are, are the heart and soul of Noongar country um, and the heart and soul of Carolup and the establishment um, way back in the early 1900s. And I think that's still having an impact on our community, our elders past and present and the wider community as well. And I think, um, it's a great education tool and reflecting back upon the, the tools that the children had at the time and the way they looked at life and the community in those days reflects in their paintings today. Mm. And um, it's, it's a great story. Marion, how could the paintings play a part in building resilience in the future? I think it's a, a very important part of resilience because for me, when you look at those paintings, and, and even the artists and how they, how they, they actually, you know, did the paintings. Um, there's that really strong sense of pride. I mean, I feel extremely proud um, of those paintings. Mm. It just makes you feel, you know, wow, this, this is Noongar paintings that were done so long ago. And, and uh, they're just so well, you know, represented and the lifestyle. So for me, the part of resilience is definitely that pride in culture and, and that pride of those, those artists and, and also the impact that it has on our identity. Mm. You know, we, for me, the biggest part of my resilience, you know, as a Noongar person is uh, knowing who I am, where I come from, so my identity, and then being proud of my identity. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's, that's how, you know, when you look at resilience, that's how it impacts. I think those stories are, will go on and go on forever um, and they'll be there for our children to come and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and hopefully that we can still educate our own people in the wider community and have these stories still alive and well in the years to come as we move through the 21st century. Mary and Tony, thank you for your time today. Thank you. And thank you for thank joining you. us here on Noongar Dantu.